It is now 31st of March 2020. Very soon our world politicians must make a crucial decision. When can we ease the current rules on lockdown? When can we return to normal life? They will have to balance public health against the despair being felt by millions as they are deprived of income and are seeing their careers and futures crumbling before their eyes. Their decision will not be easy and hopefully the analysis presented in this video will help us all gain a better perspective. One difficulty will be agreeing on which source of data is the master. For example, at around the same time on the internet, the World Health Organization shows there are 33,257 deaths, while Willometers records 37,814 deaths. We will use this as our master data for analysis. We use the same source for daily deaths recorded since 22 January 2020. The peak daily death so far recorded is 3,723. The total period covers 69 days. The analysis will begin by making two comparisons. The first is, given that over 69 days there has been a total of 37,814 COVID-19 deaths across the world, how many deaths would typically have occurred over 69 days across the world? 2017 is the most up-to-date data we have. The world annual deaths for 2017 was nearly 56 million. The approximate deaths per day were 153,276. Therefore, the approximate deaths for 69 days were around 10 and a half million. So the comparison is about 38,000 to 10 and a half million. The next comparison is given that the maximum daily rate for COVID-19 is to date 3,723. How does that compare to a typical average daily death rate? We have, of course, previously answered this question, but it is worth highlighting the comparison of around 150,000 to 3,723. And sometimes numbers alone do not make an impact. But if we make a comparison to child mortality, we see that on any average day, 15,000 young children under the age of five die. This is four times the highest coronavirus death recorded so far. We now move on to cover the situation in Italy and ask why has Italy experienced so many deaths attributed to coronavirus? The phrase attributed to is key here. It exposes a tremendous difficulty both health organizations and politicians face when trying to understand the data. Italy has recorded 11,591 deaths from coronavirus. This graph of the underlying data shows the annual deaths by age group for Italy in 2017. You immediately notice the high number of deaths to those aged 70 and over. We first break down the data to show typical deaths per day and then show deaths over 69 days. The typical number of deaths for those 70 or over greatly exceeds the total coronavirus deaths recorded so far. And in fact, in Italy, 85.6% of those who have died were over 70. So there is a query. Are the coronavirus deaths on top of the normal 97,000 or are they a part of it? 
This brings us directly to the next point. Can we trust the coronavirus statistics? Especially for the over 70s and those with underlying health issues. In terms of the number of cases of infection recorded, it is simply a fact that most cases are never counted and never will be. For example, many people during the winter will have had a runny nose, maybe a headache, maybe felt unwell for a few days, but recovered as usual and never visited a doctor. So any possible cases of coronavirus, or flu for that matter, will not have been recorded. But this is not such a big issue. The big issue lies in the cases of coronavirus deaths in the senior age groups and with those who had a previously serious underlying condition. Just how do you classify such cases? How do you determine what a man of 85 died from if he was previously ill but also tested positive for COVID-19. What are the rules governing such cases? This is well explained in this article by the journalist Peter Hitchens. He quotes the example of Italy and goes on to quote Professor John Lee, a recently retired professor of pathology. Professor Lee is concerned that by making COVID-19 a notifiable disease, the authorities may have inadvertently distorted the figures. In the current climate, he says, anyone with a positive test for COVID-19 will certainly be known to the clinical staff looking after them. If any of these patients dies, staff will have to record the COVID-19 designation on the death certificate, contrary to usual practice for most infections of this kind. He further explains that there is a big difference between COVID-19 causing death and COVID-19 being found in someone who had died of other causes. Making COVID-19 notifiable might give the appearance of it causing increased numbers of deaths. Whether this is true or not, it might appear far more of a killer than flu, simply because of the way deaths are recorded. Therefore, it is evident that this may have very significantly distorted the number of COVID-19 deaths in Italy and any country with large proportions of senior citizens. This includes the United States and the United Kingdom. Let's come at the problem from another angle, another perspective. How many people on average would have been expected to die from influenza over the past 69 days? And we can then compare that figure to coronavirus deaths. We will use the annual figure of 650,000 for those deaths caused by flu. From this it follows that average daily deaths are 1,780 and the deaths over 69 days would be an average of nearly 120,000. This calculation would probably be low as flu is seasonal and not spread out evenly, but it will suffice for our purposes. The deaths from flu amount to almost four times that of coronavirus. This still leaves the proportion of coronavirus as significant. But if we take into account the issue just discussed, how coronavirus deaths may be inflated due to the way deaths are recorded, then we can see why some scientists are warning that flu is the bigger concern compared to coronavirus. And we can also see just why we need clarity on these statistics. We will now look at three separate countries to drop down to a further level of detail. First, the United States. 
The breakdown for 2017 by age group shows the preponderance of those aged 70 and above and the age group 50 to 69. The approximate annual deaths are around 2.8 million, which makes the approximate deaths over 69 days to be 540,000. As of March 31, the total deaths from coronavirus in the US was 3,167. Not a large proportion of the typical total deaths over that period. This fact has led one expert to describe the coronavirus as a blip. What is the current status of the United Kingdom? Again, we notice the large number of deaths in the 70 and above age groups for 2017. The total approximate annual deaths for 2017 was just over 600,000 making the 69-day total to be around 11,500. Total coronavirus deaths as of March 31 was 1,408. We need to ask the question, how many of those deceased were aged 70 and above? And how many of those recorded as dying from coronavirus, in fact, died from other underlying causes. What is the current status in Thailand? The population of Thailand is around 69 million compared to the UK's population of 66 million. It has a less pronounced number of those aged 70 and over. The number of 2017 approximate annual deaths was 467,000 and over 69 days the typical number of deaths would be about 88,000. Over the same 69 day period the number of deaths from coronavirus has been 10. One last query globally what do people die of and how does it compare to coronavirus? The world deaths for 2017 had these causes. This is where the coronavirus stands at the moment. In comparison to diarrhea and lower respiratory diseases, for example. Our analysis has finished. Hopefully it has demonstrated how difficult it will be for politicians to take decisions. Again, hopefully, it will also demonstrate the very clear need to better understand the statistics. Whether we plunge into a world of depression and despair depends on our politicians taking the hard work required to gain that understanding. Let's hope we all stay well and can soon resume normal life.